today we're going to talk about punching down a patch panel. Hi, my name is Craig Rashad and I am the electrical instructor. Today we're going to talk about punching down a patch panel. Well, what's a patch panel? A patch panel is nothing more than a connection that is made by your server or switches and what we're trying to do is bring our information or switching from the patch panel out to our workstation. So, you know, when you plug your computer in at school, work, home, wherever you may be, it's information got to come from somewhere. Well, that information, when you plug it into the wall or your workstation, that runs back to a patch panel, which is then patched to another piece of equipment, which then holds your data or phone or whatever it may be. Why do we need them? Well, we need them because without this, we, we, we don't know where they're going to be connected. We can't just put everything under a big wire nut. It would be nice, but we can't. So what we do is we bring our wires back. So every workstation has a designation and that designation has to go back to a specific patch panel because the IPT professionals need to plug into their equipment into the right location because if there's a printer on a job and let's say there's 15 or 20 computers that are connected to one printer well if they don't have if they don't know which computers are going to be set up to that particular printer they're not going to be able to patch it through so that that it will make a connection again the IT aspect of it is a little bit more than what an electrician has to deal with like I've said in my previous videos patch to port or patch panel to workstation Point A to point B, that's what we want to worry about. Making a good connection in our patch panel, running our wires in a neat and workmanlike manner, punching down our workstations, making sure when we run our tester, our tester, we get all our pairs coming back together, nothing's crossed, nothing's miswired, nothing's reversed. We're okay, we're good. Let the IT guys take over from there. I'm okay with that. Okay, hope you guys can see this. This is a patch rack. Okay, this rack is built. It's basically two pieces of metal, two sets of feet, two sets of cross braces up top. What we, can, what we do is we build, if we have a place where we have multiple locations, multiple wires coming into a location, we're gonna build, we're gonna put a rack in. Now, smaller locations, smaller little jobs, you know, you can run a 12 port patch panel and you can buy them in a smaller location where you can throw them on a wall and not have to worry about them. There's also bracket mount and there's also wall mount. They come in, uh, believe they come in small and large, but we can also get somewhere between a two and a four foot rack or a swing rack, okay? So again, depending on the job you're doing, but today, this, is, this video is about the patch panel. What is a patch panel and how do you punch it down? So just so you guys are aware, you have a couple different things when you're dealing with these racks. This just so you know, this rack is 19 inches. So what happens is you have to make sure that your patch panel is correct, gonna be able to fit in the right rack if you're adding to an existing rack. Always wanna make sure you measure. You're gonna have three types that you're gonna deal with. You're gonna have a 12 port, you're gonna have a 24 port, and you're gonna have a 48 port. Now, we can have 150 ports. We can have, you know, a thousand ports on one rack if need be depending on how big your job is. You may have four or five racks that may have, you know, five or six 48 port patch panels. Again, it's all set up on how your job is gonna, how big your job is gonna be. If your job is big, you're gonna have a lot of patch panels. If your job is small, you're not gonna have as many. You can still use a rack, a single rack is totally fine, but you wanna make sure our work is done in a neat and workmanlike manner because that's what we live on. So what are we looking at? Okay, so what you have to understand is on this style rack, when we're looking at it, we're looking at it from behind, we're actually looking at things backwards, okay? And when I say backwards, I don't mean upside down and reverse, I mean just flipped around. So if I was to look at this panel, my number one port would be on this side. My number one punch down is gonna be here. Number two will be right below it, okay? Number three, number four, number five, number six number seven, number eight, and so on and so forth, okay? So when we're punching them down, it's one through 24, and then we're gonna go 25 through 48. 
that's on a 24 port patch panel. What are we really looking at? Well, we have to know what our color code is going to be. You're looking at a Cat 5E patch panel. Now, you can see that we have different colors here. That has to do with our punch down. Now, if you haven't seen my video that we talked about the four pairs of conductors, go back and watch the 25 port. I'm sure the link will be up top. Go through and check that out before you go any further because what we're going to do is we're going to talk about where our wires get landed. So we have two things that we're going to be dealing with. 568B is going to be our bottom row and above that is going to be our 568A. So I hope you can see the distinction between the two. Down here we have the 568B, blue, orange, green, brown. Then we have 568A is blue, green, orange, brown. Hope that makes sense. These are 110 block punch down. These are 110 block punch downs. And we just have to remember what are we punching down? Are we punching down A or are we punching down B? For the most part, you're going to be punching down B. That's what everybody is using these days. So here, let me show you how to punch that down. Okay, so we're going to take our cable. Now, one of the misconceptions that people have is, oh, well, I can just punch it down here and that'll be good. No. We want to keep these twists as tight as possible, including on the patch panel. So what we're going to do is we're going to be leading with our blue. So we see blue white is on this side here. What we're going to do is this. We're going to take and we're going to actually do our orange first. This is the way I do it. It just makes life that much easier for me. When you're looking at the patch panel, you can feel that there's a raised spot. Well, those raised spots, that's what you're splitting your pairs over, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to bring our wire and our end of our cable here that is exposed is going to be within a half inch here, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to hold that nub where our white is, okay, with our finger. And what we're going to do is we're just going to untwist the cable just a little bit. And we're basically going to just separate it and press it into place, okay? And then for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to do the same thing with my green-white because once I get that in place, I'm in good shape. And then I'll just continue doing the same thing with my brown-white. And then I'm going to roll back and I'm going to do the same thing with my blue-white. Remember, we're leading with white-blue and blue. Okay, that's what we're looking at right there. Okay, so I have my blue white, my blue, my white orange, my orange, my white green, my green, my white brown, and my brown. Now I'm going to punch it down with my punch down tool. My excess is here, so my punch down tool, my cut side will be up. And now we just punch down a Cat 5E patch. That's how you punch down a Cat 5E patch panel. It's very simple. Just remember what you're using 568A, 568B, set it in place. I always start with my, my, my second pair and then spread it out that way, keeping it in the center. Other than that, I'm sure somebody will teach you another way, but that's the way I do it. That being said, I hope you learned something. You know, I just put this playlist together for Telcom. Uh, this is going to be the last of five videos that I just put together. And, you know, I want you to, you know, do me a favor. Leave me a comment down below if this helped you. Um, you know, just let me know I'm doing a good job and I'll keep making more videos for you. With that being said, if this helped you, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. As always, if you haven't subscribed, please do me a favor, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the bell so that you can be up to date with what we're putting out every Friday. Every Friday I put on a new video. As always, have a great day and be safe.